If you're using Notion but feel like it's not actually making your life any easier, then this video will help. After years of trial and error, I've found five ridiculously small habits that have completely changed the way I work, and they might just change your life too. I've helped over 18,000 people now with free and paid Notion templates, and I've personally gone from an overwhelmed mess to a clean, simple setup, whilst obviously still getting everything done. In this video, I'll break down five simple Notion habits that don't require any complex setups, but will save you hours of wasted time. Each one builds on the last, and by the end, you'll have a system that makes staying productive feel effortless. Now, if you ignore these, Notion will stay as just another app that you dump notes into and never actually check. But if you apply them, you'll start working faster with no extra effort. So here is my new dashboard. Yes, we could use headquarters, my premium Notion template, but this video is not about that. So here at the top, I'm going to be very creative and write dashboard. The first thing that we are going to do is write gallery. Now this gallery here is going to be our projects. Now, hopefully you've got your projects in Notion already. If you don't, then that is priority number one. But here we have project one and project two. What we are going to do here is click on any of these and we are going to use this tags feature. So it is a property, but what I'll do is just delete this property in case you're not seeing that. We are going to click on add property and here we are going to click on the select. Now with this select, we are going to write if it is active. So you can call this a favorite, you could call this an active, you could call this currently, whatever you want. I'm just going to call it active and create that. Now I'll click away. So we have project one and project two. The problem is we can't see which one of these is active. So I'll click on these three dots here, click on properties, and here I'm going to say to show active. Now quickly, I'll change the layout here and just make these a bit smaller because right now they're medium, let's make them small. Click here, let's do project three as well. And what I wanna do is have active separated from project one and project three. So I'll click on these three dots here and we are going to be using this thing called group. And we are going to group this by if it's active. So now we can see not active and active. You'll have all of these different project ideas and stuff. And instead of scattering your time, slightly working on project three, slightly working on project seven, instead up here, we're just going to have a few active projects. But the reason we're adding them in here is you could still take notes into project A, whatever that is. Let's say you have a movie idea. So that movie idea here, you could still take notes. Good guy beats bad guy. That's a great movie note. So now I'll click away. So now I can still take notes and add tasks and stuff to these projects here, but it won't be an active project, which are these here. And these are the ones that I'll actively spend my time on. That's why tip number one is to project dump. Add every project idea in here that you have. All right, for habit number two, what we're going to do is create a database. So we'll click on table view here and we'll click on new table. And this here is going to be my task list. And I'll just write task one. What I've learned from reading your comments and doing a lot of research about this stuff is that often we spend time just doing, you know, random tasks. Task one, task two, task three. We're just randomly doing stuff. And we never think if it is building to a larger project. That is why we are going to click on the plus here and we'll use this thing called the relation property. So click on relation here. And what we are going to do is link tasks here to your project. So I can see that here in my recents, I can see projects. So I'll click on that and click on add relation. So now if I click here on task one, I'm going to see all of these projects that I just added, such as movie idea, project two. I really should have named these something better. So let's just say that this is relating here to project two. Let's say the same thing here for task two, that is relating to project two. Now let's say hypothetically I'm working project three here. I'm like, you know what? This is just a random task. It's not got anything to do with anything. Well, then I have to ask myself, should I actually do this task? Typically, the ROI from tasks come from completing projects. So if a task isn't directly relating and working towards a project, then you might want to second guess if it's a task actually worth doing. And that's why notion habit number two is to always label what project the task is related to. Now in your dashboard here, ideally you also have your calendar, a few workspaces, stuff like that. So it's going to get quite long. So what I recommend you do is up here, write button. Now, if you haven't used buttons before, they are very, very clever and they can get a bit confusing, but I'll show you how they work. So what we're going to do here is write new task. Basically what we're saying is when this button here is clicked, then what we wanted to do, so now we're going to tell it the action we want is to add a page to. So a page in Notion, it gets a bit confusing, but these here in Notion, they are called pages as well. So task one here, you might also call it an item. It's got a few names, which gets a bit confusing. So what I want to do is add page two, and now I need to select which database I want. 
So I want it to be in the tasks database and that's this one here. So I'll click on that. And now before I click on done, what I have to do is click on add action and I have to ensure that I open up this page. So I'll click on open here and now I'll select this new page added. So just to go over that, this button, when it's clicked, then we're going to add a page to our tasks database and that page will then get opened in center peak. So now I'll click on done. So as you're working throughout your day, you know, you're thinking about this project, whatever it is, or maybe you get distracted with your movie idea or you're working in another program. We want a quick way to add a task. I can click here, new task. I'll write task four here. I'll say the project. Let's say it's to do with a movie idea. And now I can click away. I now have task four movie idea added to this database. That's why habit number three in Notion is to use quick buttons. Sorry to interrupt. If you're looking for a functional Notion workspace, then check out headquarters. It's linked in the description. It's got every feature you could need to be productive. There's a link in the description if you're interested. Now, as I said, this page will get slightly longer. We have our projects here and we have our tasks, but we are missing a core feature that we need, which is our calendar. So I'll click calendar here, but we are not going to use a new calendar. For this, I actually want to see my tasks database. So I'll type tasks here and select this existing database here. And what I'll quickly do is click on these three dots here and I'm going to change the layout here from where the show calendar as month is to show calendar as week. I'll also make this full width. Now, as you can see, this date property showed up here. That's because you can't have a calendar without a date property. That makes sense. And because these two here are the same database, as you can see, this little arrow here means that it's not the original database. This is the original database because these are the same database. If I say task one here and say for today, it will immediately show up here on this Friday. And I'll just do the same for this one here. And you know, I'll do the same for this one here, task four, but instead I will simply drag it like that. Now, the problem is you might end up with a very, very long list of tasks to do every single day. And that's going to be a problem. So what I do in Notion is add this property here. And we'll do a select property here. And this will be the type of concentration that is required. So one of the labels will be flow. So that just means you have to be in a flow state of mind in order to complete the task. These typically take about two hours. Another one is easy. So this is a shallow task, one that doesn't involve too much cognitive demand. And then the last one I definitely recommend you add is a quick task. These are five minute tasks. They really don't take that long to do. Now, just to show you my planning process, what I'll do here is just change all of these to a flow state task. So task one here requires flow, task two requires flow and task four requires flow. And what I'll do up here on my calendar is click on these three dots here and click on properties. And I'm going to say that I want to be able to see the type. So I'll click on that there. Now I can see the type of concentration that is required. And because this is the exact same information, if I change this to easy, as you can see, this changes to easy. I change it to flow, that changes to flow. I have this simple rule where you can only have two flow tasks per day because each task that's required a flow state of mind, i.e. requires a lot of cognitive demand, will make you tired and your brain can only really concentrate for four hours per day. And here you can see we now have six hours worth of cognitive demand. So what we'll have to do here is drag task four to the next day. You're going to get a lot more selective on the tasks that you're planning to do each day because you know you'll only do two flow tasks per day. That's why habit number four is to label the flow required for each task. Now there's one last small habit that I recommend you have in your Notion setup. And it's so dead obvious that you're going to say, you don't even need to talk about this, but I really do recommend it. What we're going to do here in the projects is add this completed button here. If I asked you, tell me every single project you've completed this year, you probably wouldn't be able to tell me. And that is a problem because humans are motivated by progress. How are you meant to know your progress if you don't know which projects you've completed? So now the workflow here is changing. We'll go from no active to active. So I'll say project one here, let's make this active. Then we'll be working on these active projects. These are the ones that will be doing tasks that relate to these projects here. They're relating to our active projects. And then once they're completed, we'll change it from active to completed. That way we can always go back and see all of the projects that we've completed. Humans are motivated by progress. So make sure that progress is documented. So habit number five in Notion is to label the projects you complete. Now this dashboard here is extremely simple as you can see. If you want something that is a lot more powerful, that has every productivity feature that you could need, is used by over 2000 users with a five-star rating, then check out headquarters. There's a link in the description to my template. It has changed my life and many others. If you want to see a full tour, then click on this video here or it is linked in the description. Thank you so much for watching.